Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Gingerbread Man Running, and as many of you are used to seeing Luke do these shoe reviews, this week it'll be me. Uh, we had a vote on our Instagram page. It was the Arahi 4 by Hoka versus the GT2000 by A6 and the Hoka 1 swinging for the fences. So I'm bringing you one of my favorite shoes this week, so that's why I'm behind the camera and Luke's off today uh, as we have reopened and kind of get back in the swing of things. So this week I'm going to be bringing you the Arahi 4 by Hoka. Um, coming in at you, coming into you at $130. Uh, I think it's a really good price range for a well cushioned, well designed stability shoe. Uh, with that being said, it is a little on the heavy side. Um, the men's shoe coming in at 9.6 ounces, and the women's shoe just a hair over eight ounces. Um, multiple color choices. Wide sizes are available. It's a great shoe. It has a lot of options for a lot of people. Uh, it's got a firm inside upper inside rubber here to help correct pronation. It's called a J-frame, so when you come down, this part is pushing you back because it has less give than the outside. Uh, it does have a new upper from the Arahi 3, which I don't have here to show you like we normally do. Um, it's a little bit lighter weight. It promotes a little bit better breathability, if that's a word, and uh, it just aesthetically looks a little cleaner and a little more modern than the last version of the Arahi. And also, it's lighter. The entire shoe is lighter than the Arahi 3, which I thought was a great shoe and was still very comfortable. Um, it still has that meta rocker here, so that way it gets you through your whole gait cycle. So when you walk through, it does have that uh, rocking chair kind of step and feel when you walk into it. I, the heel cup's firm. You know, we really get in there. It really, I find the shoe grips me. When I get it sized right, I had to take it in a nine and a half. So I'm somewhere between a nine and a half and a ten, and I went down a size to get it to feel right to, on my heel. Uh, and I had a little bit of more room up here, which is something I like, um, which we'll talk about here in a second. I felt that it gripped me very well. Um, as far as running goes, this is something good for a longer run. Um, it, like I said, this is a little bit heavier of a shoe. So you may not find it suitable for your up-tempo, shorter, faster runs, or maybe even a race day, because it is a little on the heavy side. You may want to cut down and find a shoe that is a little lighter. But this is a great training shoe. It's a great walking shoe. It's a great, I pronate when I walk and I need to go to work in a tennis shoe kind of thing, or not tennis shoe, in a running shoe, because I find them comfortable. Um, it's also got great traction. Uh, I wore these outside during the winter months sometimes and uh, this high abrasion uh, sole is just really really good it's smooth it it didn't i didn't feel like i was going to slip like i do in some other shoes that are made for running that are have less traction um I, I find this to be a really responsive shoe because it's a little firmer than other Hoka's, so you get a little bit more responsiveness. Uh, I think it's kind of akin to, you know, a little, it has a little bit more snap to it, in my opinion. I, I like the way my foot feels in this shoe. I really, I really think that um, this is a kind of an all-around hitter for somebody who needs guidance, kind of similar to the Adrenaline, but um, not as catch-all. You know, you. I wouldn't put somebody who's more neutral towards the neutral side in this shoe. Uh, this is definitely for somebody who pronates. Uh, hmm. It's really close to the, the Arahi 3 in terms of just overall design, uh, including the pull tab in the back here to make it on, easy on and off, but just l a lighter weight. So some of the pr pros about this shoe, uh, subtle guidance, you know, you don't really notice it. It feels kind of like the neutral shoes that Hoka carries just a little firmer. It's subtle guidance, which is great. You kind of don't feel the pushback as much, um, you know. So maybe that may make a difference, just mentally helping you push through some of those longer runs. Um, it's reliable. It's still soft but firm. Like stepping in the shoe and walking around in it all day, I didn't feel I didn't feel the ground. I felt the cushioning, which I really enjoy in a shoe, and um, I would wear this thing out just walking around doing other things and running and just wearing it to work just because of how comfortable it is versus 
you know, it's it's firm. It's it's like the perfect mattress when you find one that's firm but soft and it hits all the right spots. Uh, that's what this shoe does for me and a lot of people too out there. Really have enjoyed the Arahi Four. Um, you know, it's lighter and more stable than its predecessor, the Arahi Three. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, you know, if you have the Arahi Three, you're not going to notice much of a difference other than maybe the weight, uh, a whole ounce lighter almost, and just maybe a bit more stable as they continue to upgrade and polish off the EVA foam and how they're doing their J-Frame technology with the Meta Rocker. So keeping that in mind, there are some cons to this shoe. It's not light enough for short, fast runs or something up-tempo. Um, I mean, you can, but you know, you're gonna notice the weight of the shoe. You're gonna notice that you're not being as fast as possible during those kind of runs. Um, and you may find some rubbing on the arch that's kind of synonymous with a lot of other Hoka shoes that we've run into. Some people feel them on the arch. You know, maybe it doesn't sit right because of the stack height. So definitely make sure you try it on before you buy it. And they can run a little big. Like I said, I sit somewhere between a nine and a half and a 10 and some shoes I'm a 10. And I felt the 10 was just I was swimming in it while other shoes, I can fit a 10 no problem but I put a 10 on in this and I feel like I'm wearing a boat and the nine and a half still feels a little wide through here, but the nine for me is too small. So definitely try it on. There's some trial and error with figuring out what size Hoka shoe you wear. Um, like I said, 130 bucks, 9.6 ounces for the men's, shy over eight ounces for the women. Um, five millimeter heel to toe drop, not as drastic as some of the other Hoka's as you can see on the wall behind me with the bigger stack height, but definitely an all around stability winner. Something that I recommend highly when people come in saying they want something comfortable to walk in all day and they may show a little bit of pronation or have a higher degree of pronation. Uh, comfortable, softer than the Gaviota, just an all day wear shoe. Yeah, I want, doing some research to help share this with you guys. One of the big things is, is it, my wife gives us a lot of crap, says it is not a cute shoe, but you know what? Uh, sometimes function over form, right? So with that being said, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below, leave us a comment. Hopefully I can do some more of these. I'm not as good as Luke with the technical stuff. He just happens to know it all up here. I have a thousand post-it notes uh, trying to give you guys the information you need. So thank you guys very much for watching. Please share it with your friends, share it with others. Keep an eye on the channel. We're going to be doing some more fun stuff uh, than the shoe reviews. And keep an eye on our Facebook and Instagram pages for giveaways and just upcoming races with the, with the weather getting better. We may have some upcoming races. Sign up for They might be free virtual races. Help out some great causes out there. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. This is Zach from Just Red Man Running.